Welcome to ACCA Advanced Audit and Assurance or AAA paper exam tips for March 2024. My name is Steve Chen, the fellow member of ACCA, course director at Global APC. I've been teaching the AAA for many years. I've published four accounting books and also I'm the technical writer for ACCA AB magazine, particularly for the IFRS column. Now, my top tip for the uh, March 2024. Now, the exam, yes, you may be aware, 100 marks, 80 will be a technical and 20 professional marks. Split into three compulsory questions, section A, which means the question one, 50 mark a question, and then question two and question three in the section B. Now, in the section A, yes, there will be two types of big requirement. Type number one, evaluating the business risk i.e. what the risk that the client is facing or risk of material misstatement which means the risk to the external auditor i.e. the risk that the financial statements of the client's company may be wrong and therefore if you fail to spot these of course we'll end up giving a wrong audit opinion. Now, in answering the business risk question, you always notice that there will be two marks per point. However, for each point that you write, firstly, yes, you can summarise what case information said. Uh, yes, you could directly copy and paste the case information into your answer. But if I were you, I would not do it. I would like to summarise it in my own words, just to make sure that my answer is not a copy and paste exercise. And then I will need to tell the examining team that why this will be a, the business risk. Because, yes, using your business sense, that for example, it may be, okay, now, for example, animals should be stored in a safe and clean environment. It may be breach of regulation because the client's company may not be able to meet with the standard. Now, make sure that when you're saying may, Yes, you need to bring the common sense in, you need to bring the case information in, or even you need to expand your answer a bit further. Finally, it's important you say about the impact. Okay, now, there's no point simply saying that this will be a reputation risk, but you need to further expand your answer. So, for example, it may impact on the supply chain. Yes, you can see the upstream suppliers. For example, yes, but publicity may impact on the sales in the future. Now, you need to expand your answer in such a way. Of course, my revision notes will certainly help. My revision notes has been summarizing all the bits and pieces here into approximately 84 pages, okay, that you need to know, and all sort of standard answer you can directly copy and paste into your AAA exam. So, for example, when I'm answering the business risk, I summarize from the past example, okay, so the three steps approach each of the scenarios in turn, so make sure that you can read them through carefully. Now, regarding a type 2 in the question 1 for the big requirement, yes, audit risk is very likely to come up. So make sure that you understand the difference between the risk of material misstatement and audit risk. Now, audit risk on top of the ROMM, which is the risk of material misstatement, it also includes detection risk. When you see the detection risk in the AAA exam, always directly copy and paste these two paragraphs into your answer. Of course, you will see, yes, you can gain the easy marks as a result of it. Don't just copy one sentence, but two sentences, okay, on the screen, that's important. For example, there might be first year audit, okay, you don't have experience, and opening balances and comparative information will not be available there. Okay, so this will give rise to audit risk. So make sure that you directly copy and paste them in. Now, in addition to them, of course, my tips for the IFRS related knowledge, for example, the IFRS 16 leases. Now, you need to understand that uh, from the lessee's point of view, we need to recognise the right of use asset as well as the lease liabilities. We also need to understand that the rent free period does not really stop depreciating the right of use asset at all. So even though you've got the rent free period, you still need to depreciate the right of use asset. So make sure they're ready. 
Regarding the holiday pay obligation, so make sure that you know how to account for the accrued expense for the accumulating paid absences, so that's the important though. Of course, the ISA related to groups will be very important. So in particular, I would say that this time is time that the significant components determination may come up. Revenue are from the IFR 16. For example, there might be a risk that revenue being recognised too early, so you need to check certain things. Related to capitalised development expenditure, yes, that may be an area that you need to focus on, but a more important area would be the audit procedure on the import licence and patent. Yes, from the past exam, so make sure that you read the exam this answer, and also in my notes, very carefully. Regarding the pension accounting, certainly be an issue each and every sitting, so make sure that you're ready. Another tip, okay, related to the procedure, so for example, for the fair value changes, uh, make sure that you are aware that if anything that relates to the fair value stuff, you need to engage with an expert. So, of course, the examining team, yes, in the requirements, may tell you exactly what to do. So, instead of simply uh, arriving at the uh, procedures on the fair value changes, but what we can do from the external auditor's point of view, uh, apart from checking the calculations done by the experts, I'm afraid that there's not too much things that we can do at the moment. So make sure that you rely on the expert opinion. So you need to check the background of the expert. That's important there. The procedures related to IFRS number 8, segmental reporting, ICE 36, impairment of non current asset, and the classification of the investment, such as the subsidiary, associate, joint ventures, and even the audit procedures related to the holiday pay obligations, pensions, share options, so make sure that you're ready. Of course, in the question one, the final area that you need to recap on is that the two past exam questions, one from the March and June 2021 and one related to September 2020, uh, so related to the KPIs and also the data analytics, so make sure that you're ready. Now, section B then, of course, when talking about the quality management, I've got my own summarised format, okay, of your answer, and to see, for example, the step one that we need to do, so for example, the client's complete is a listed entity, okay, or uh, the audit partner comments due to a lack of knowledge. Now, we need to make certain comments regarding the quality management failures, for example, not following the ISA 220, the statement implies a cost constraint to the audit. Okay, so that's important. It's to notice the keywords to the examining team. It's necessary to follow the ISA when the audit work is performed, and necessary audit work should not be cut back. Okay, now, I need to expand your answer rather than saying that, okay, we need to do this, uh, but you need to expand your answer to gain enough marks in the AAA. Of course, in my own summary, in my revision notes, I've provided you with all sorts of issues, okay, related to, for example, the risk of material misstatements. Okay, so you can learn, learn the format of the answer. In addition to that, it's the ethics question and also the quality control part. You can see different scenarios that pop up each and every time. They are quite repetitive, so make sure that you... Uh, learn the, the paragraphs that I summarise it for you uh, so you can uh, uh, focus more and better on the AAA exam. The next area, the acceptance question and forecasting regarding the forecasted PL and forecasted statement of cash flows question may come up, so make sure they revise very carefully on the December 2022 question 2, uh, so make sure that you're ready. Okay, now, the reporting stage, I would say that certain areas that you need to be uh, ready for, so for example, regarding the going concern and the audit implications regarding the IFRS areas, so for example, the intangible asset, and also the material inconsistency, okay, of the uh, other information, such as the chairman statement and the financial statement, and whether or not the draft auditor's report is appropriate. So make sure to revise this question 
very, very carefully from March, June 2021, question three. Okay, so uh, that's my top tip. So I can't guarantee that these tips will uh, come up in the actual exam, but I provided the, the AAA training for many years already. So you can see my track record on my YouTube channel. Now, uh, AAA exam is very challenging. It's a worthy paper, so make sure always focus on to expand your answer. That's important. And of course, my revision notes will certainly help with summarizing all the key stuff, okay, into the block one, revision on risk, to block two, revision on big question two, and then question three and other syllabus areas, in summarizing them into readable and memorable format. So you can directly learn the paragraph and to copy in your answer with a bit of application to the case and you can certainly gain very high marks in the actual exam. So don't forget that there will be lots of easy marks in the AAA paper, so such as in the question one, the determination of materiality, such as in the question one regarding the conclusion paragraph that you need to be watching out. Right then, I look forward to your exam success for the March 2024 ACCA AAA paper. Best of luck then. Bye-bye. APC, accounting for your future.